So we know now that our ST segment is really the key to seeing if there's myocardial ischemia during stress testing. So here we have our ST segment, and here we have our baseline. Isoelectric, when the baseline and the ST segment are on the same level. When we talk about change, we're looking for a significant change in the ST segment from where it was in the standing pre-stress ECG. Greater than or equal to one millimeter, which is 0.1 millivolts at standard calibration, is considered a significant change. So we're talking about one little box if we're at standard calibration. So here we have our baseline PR segment. Here's our ST segment. Here we're about, what, one and a half boxes. So this is significant, greater than a millimeter, greater than or equal to a millimeter. This ST segment is basically flat. It's horizontal. So this is called horizontal ST segment depression. And other than this little hitch here in the J point, it really wouldn't matter if we measured the ST segment here or here or here. We're going to get the same amount of depression from baseline. So that's your horizontal ST segment depression. On the other hand, sometimes our ST segment slopes down over time. Somewhere in here we go into our T wave. Here we have it down sloping. This is what it's called when it goes down, down sloping ST segment. And in this case, we're going to get a very different measurement if we measure the ST segment here or here or here. So we need some sort of guideline as to where we're going to measure our ST segment. Here's our baseline PR segment. If I measure here, I might get a millimeter. If I measure here, I'm close to two millimeters, certainly over a millimeter and a half of depression. So if we have this downsloping ST segment depression, we have to have some sort of standard to where we're going to measure the depression. The J point is where the QRS ends and the ST segment begins. A very common approach to this is to go 80 milliseconds, which is two little boxes at standard calibration, after the J point. Some people will call that 80 milliseconds post QRS. It's the same thing. So we find our J point and we go over two little boxes. Now here, our J point isn't right on the line. So we start wherever the J point is and we go two little boxes over. That would put us here. And here is where we'd measure our ST segment depression. Here's our J point. Sometimes it's hard to see exactly where that is, but this seems to be it. We go two boxes over, two small boxes. So here, we're in the middle of a box. So this would be one box, two boxes. Here's our measurement point. Two little boxes, which is 80 milliseconds at standard calibration, 0.08 seconds after the J point. That's our measurement point for the ST depression. Sometimes we have a nice flat line in terms of the ST segment, horizontal ST depression. Really wouldn't matter where we measured this, it would all be the same. Sometimes we have a down sloping ST segment. We should describe it as such, and we have to be careful where we measure there because we're going to get a different number. So, greater than or equal to a millimeter of ST depression is significant. We should describe whether it's horizontal or down sloping, and it's typical to measure it 80 milliseconds post J point. ST is the key for ischemia. How much change we see is important. We want to be as precise as we can in describing it. Greater than or equal to a millimeter is significant. Where did we measure this? Many people will use 80 milliseconds after the QRS, also known as 80 milliseconds after the J point. So I hope you liked this video. It was taken from our CME accredited TE Essentials course. Absolutely make sure to check it out and to register for a free trial account, which will give you access to selected lessons in the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So take care and I talk to you soon. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.